Joe, Joe, you have accomplished quite a bit with awards uh, through the years. Um, we congratulate you on that. Um, one of the questions uh, I'd like to ask you now is, what would you like to be remembered as most? <laughs> uh, not being interested in making money in them. Okay. Not being interested in seeing how many I could raise. Mm -hmm. I'm just basically interested in improving the breed as I interpret it. Okay. Which is not necessarily the current trend. Yeah. But uh, I'm doing what I can to put it where I think believe it belongs and I always have. And that's my primary goal mm -hmm. is to raise one like the picture upstairs. Yeah. And, uh, and if I, I can do that, I'll, I'll be remembered, but I don't think I'll ever do that. Yeah. Well, I know I won't now, but uh, I never anticipated I'd be able to, and mm -hmm. well, I strive for it. Mm -hmm. And that was my main goal. I, I wasn't looking for glory, I was looking for self-satisfaction. Self-satisfaction. Self <laughs> and, uh, um... Yeah, as we looked at many of your awards, and and then uh, you spoke about writing all these articles into the uh, numerous different publications that have been out, um, it just has proven how much Joe has put into the hobby here, and, and how important it really is for individuals, uh, let it be beginners or, or even master breeders today, um, how important it is to, to continue to write articles um, continue to do video casts like we're doing for the hobby so that new and old people can continue to uh, see what has happened throughout the years uh, for the hobby and how you know we continue to hopefully improve on on the hobby um, many people in the world today still hear the word pigeon and uh, you know right away you get the terms uh, a rat with wings um, you, you get all these different uh, bad names for the for the pigeon hobby, but uh, is there something, Joe, that you can say uh, a positive thing about the pigeon hobby? Um, something positive where someone would say, "Oh, that's a dirty thing. How could you even think about raising pigeons?" Uh, is there something that you could um, possibly mention on how it's a good hobby? Well. For one thing, it keeps you at home okay. with your family, and you try to bring your family up in the pigeon world if you can. Yeah. Uh, and 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 the the pigeon hobby has kept you connected with your sons. It kind of gets in your blood. Yep. Once you've had pigeons, you always go back to them. I mean, yes. my father did the same thing. Yeah. He had pigeons, and then he didn't have them, and then he but he. Wanted to get back into them again. Yeah. And I was without them for a number of years. Mm -hmm. um, when I, you know, I got into the service in World War Two. When I got out, I got a job and I got transferred all over the damn country. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't have the time and I didn't have the location. Yes. But I looked forward to finding a place where I could anchor. I've lived here for 47 years, and I've had pigeons the whole 47 years I've lived here. Wow. So, you know, I, uh, it, it gets in your blood, you get dedicated to it, mm -hmm. and you, you fall back on it when you're looking for something to, mm -hmm. to I don't know, to k kind of uh, get your feet into and, yeah. uh, and, and, and contribute something to. You would say that the pigeon hobby is uh, is it is it a very good hobby for a family to get involved with? Yeah, it could be, and it should be. Okay. You know? uh, in all honesty, I haven't gotten any of my boys interested in it. Not yet. <laughs> they, used, they used to be interested. I've had okay. several that used yep. to go to shows with me. Okay. Uh, but now they got their own families and they're busy with work and mm -hmm. as I was doing it. I yes. would, didn't have them my whole life. Mm -hmm. I had an inter intermission period like a lot of people do in the pigeon game. Okay. They come back to it when they had it when they were kids or when they had it somewhere. 
they like to get, so it gets in the ear. You know, you think, gee, remember when I had the pigeons and I had fun with them, you yes. know, and I met nice people. And so why don't I try it again, you know? And that's kind of what we're trying to encourage people to do here mm -hmm. is if you've had them, get back in them. Yeah. If you haven't had them, find out what maybe you've been missing. Maybe you'd enjoy it. That's true. It's worth trying. You don't have to do it on a big scale. Yes. You know, just do it modestly. Because mm -hmm. you're going to grow into it. It's like having a boat. Yes. If you're a fisherman or a boatman, you start out with a rowboat and you end up with a cabin cruiser. You know, <laughs> you upgrade yourself. As yeah, you, you keep upgrading. Along. That's a good way of putting it and describing right. it. Um, you know, and going back for a, for a family that wants to get into the pigeon hobby, um, you can start off with pretty much a very small, basic type of, um, I'm going to say a rabbit hutch for, for maybe one pair of birds. Uh, and is that, I mean, is that pretty sufficient for someone to get started? Or? Not really. No. no, you need a couple of pair. Okay, you need a couple of pair? You need a couple of pair, yeah. Okay, and you, but you would need to build a cage that's a little like bit I larger? I started with two pair of satinettes, and that's all I had when I started. Okay. And, uh, but you got to have... A couple of pair because you can't just raise one pair and mate them, and you know you got to cross mate them. You got to pick out the tra the traits that each one of them have if you're interested in that. Yes. Now, if you're flying pigeons and flying pigeons is another hobby completely. Okay. It's like racing homers is another hobby completely. Yes. You know, uh, flying pigeons in New York City was a big thing mm -hmm. when I was a kid. It's not anymore. Most of the New York flyers are in Long Island or in Florida today, you know. But in those days, it was different. Mm -hmm. You can start out that way. It isn't as much fun today because you can't catch strays like you used to. Yeah. I used to spend weekends just catching other people's birds or mixing mine with somebody else's and mm -hmm. seeing how many I could get down from their flock and so forth. You don't do that anymore. Yeah. At least I'm not aware of it if they do. Yeah. Uh, so it's a different hobby today. But you have to select, do you want to fly birds? Do you want to breed show birds? you want to have racing homers? you want to have performing birds that fly for hours and hours and hours? Or you want rollers that roll? There are, there are so many options that you can enjoy. And you have to select, you don't have to select, but, you know, you should select. And you may sh switch from one to another. Uh, As time goes on, you get on, exposed yeah. to what the other fellows are doing, you know. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, almost any of the hobbies you select can be very consuming. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get very involved in them, or you can and should. Yeah. And uh, I always have, and they've always been very satisfying to me. And uh, I just wish I could do it now. I just, it breaks my heart. Next to my wife, they're my best love. Yeah. Okay? And uh, she's gone. Now my birds are gone too. Uh. So I don't have much left. But uh, <laughs> I do have nice friends. Well, that's great. That's great. So, uh, <laughs> and I appreciate that. And... Uh, they kind of stick together, and uh, it does me good, and I wish I could be part of them. But I hope to be back again someday. Well, that's good. That's good to hear, actually. So pretty much what Joe's explained is that for, for someone looking for a hobby, uh, let it be for just themselves, for their family getting started, is that the pigeon hobby is a great hobby to get into. Um, and, and again, once you decide that you want to try getting into the pigeon hobby, and it's just like breeding rabbits or, or, or another type of an animal, um, is that there's so many different categories you can go into. You got the flying, you got the racing, uh, you got the fancy birds. And, and Joe, Joe's had flying birds and the, ra and the show birds. Uh, on previous shows, you can go back and uh, take a look. We, we spoke about his oriental frills. Um, but it's a great hobby to get into. Um, I recommend they go to a pigeon show mm -hmm. along with whatever else they do because they may see some birds that they never knew existed and be fascinated by them as I was as a youngster.
Well, that's good I advice. I saw the Oriental Frill and I said, oh, I got to have some of those, you know. Yeah. We had all kinds of other birds. We had flying birds. We catch all kinds of stray birds and had a variety of, I had maybe 60 or 70 birds, pigeons flying around in you know, my loft. Uh, well, when I got into the fancy birds and saw what I could do, I said, well, if I'm going to be successful, I got to focus on these. Mm -hmm. I have to, have to select carefully and don't go for big flocks of birds. Pick out a couple of select birds and stay with them and see what you can do with them. That's a, it's a challenge. It is. It really is. And for the for you out there that are wondering, how do you find out about a pigeon show that may come up, where to find birds that are for sale and all that, again, you can look at our website, which was birdclubsusa.com. We have a show calendar section on there. It's broken down by months. And you just go ahead, um, go through the calendar. You'll see uh, shows uh, through many states in the United States, uh, other countries, but pretty much we, we cover just all the shows in the United States and all that. So, But, Joe, it, we, we, we appreciate it so much of you coming on our show once again. Oh. Thank you. And, uh, again, this was Jeff Kappa Coopcast uh, along with Joe Liska from New Canaan, Connecticut. Thank you, Joe, and look forward again to another show coming up. If I can help anybody, have them give me a buzz. Sounds good, Joe. Thank you.